How's it going everyone? Ben here and today we're going to be talking about Dr. Mike and and the hypocrisy of a lot of healthcare providers during the COVID-19 pandemic where they're not actually being really good role models for the general public. The reason why I'm actually making this video is because over the course of the last year, I've gotten really frustrated at a bunch of healthcare providers, even people that I know that go out and do not social distance and are really bad role models for the general public. And I'm specifically honing in on Dr. Mike as an example, because he's probably one of the most well-known doctors out there in the social media sphere, and young people tend to know who he is. But at the same time, I don't want to just focus on Dr. Mike in this video. I actually want to talk about the inherent systems in place that make certain doctors complicit, certain doctors and other healthcare providers. I'm not excluding nurses because nurses are also pl prone to this, but certain systems in place that make them complicit when it comes to not being held accountable, when it comes to making poor healthcare choices and poor healthcare choices that have led to the deaths of many people in the United States over hundreds of thousands of deaths in this country. Also, please don't judge me if my black shirts always have cat hair all over them because I currently live with two very, very hairy cats. And also, uh, peep this shirt. It's really great. I love it. I also want to really emphasize the fact that complete social isolation is almost practically impossible regardless of who you are as a person. People are going to make slip-ups and that is okay as long as you are making active decisions to not make that mistake again or that you made slight mistakes that haven't really really in the broad scheme of things affected your judgment on how to be safe i say this as um as someone who's maybe um gone to a grocery store with way too many people once then that is fine that's something that was out of my control but when someone actively makes a decision to make a really poor choice when they know the current restrictions in place and the current recommendations by governmental health organizations and then proceeds to basically be completely disregarding of the direness of the situation that we're in that's when i feel like someone needs to be held accountable i don't necessarily want to shame anyone if they had accidentally taken a mask off sooner than they should have my critique is specifically for people who are being very haughty with their restrictions when it comes to COVID-19 to the point where they really don't have any restrictions for themselves. I'm going to be specifically critical of healthcare providers regardless during this pandemic because healthcare providers are the ones that get the most information and know the actual severity of viruses like COVID-19. When it comes to people who are in working class populations that don't receive as much information because they're constantly working and have certain so social determinants of health that keep them from being informed about the deadliness of COVID. I am more sympathetic to that cause, even though I think they people should actively encourage them um, to seek that information and get that information and receive that information and have that information accessible. But with healthcare providers, they don't really get that excuse. And if you're really wondering, Ben, I haven't seen what Dr. Mike has done. How bad can it be? Well, here's the photo. It's pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, it's really bad. It's really bad. It, I'm not even taking into account of how spring breaky it is, <laughs> but just how how like tone deaf everyone is in this photo and how careless they are during a pandemic where they're actually pretending there is no pr pandemic going on in this photo. So obviously a photo like this doesn't really get by with a lot of people and eventually started making a lot of headlines where Dr. Mike started getting excessively critiqued on doing this photo and uh, lost a lot of following honestly and finally he decided to post an apology video however in the beginning, when I saw the apology video, like, thumbnail, I thought, oh, wow, he actually is taking accountability for what he's done. But w upon further inspection and reading comments and reading other critiques, I realized, no, he actually hasn't taken much responsibility at all for his actions. He was more sad that he got caught and tried to make excuses 
for why he did what he did instead of actually owning up to it. I highly encourage everyone watching this video to actually watch his apology video. It's actually not even in his main YouTube channel. Another really weird slash scummy thing he did was he posted the apology video in his second channel, which I didn't even know existed and neither did a bunch of people in the comments of the apology video. And that channel only has like less than 20 videos. But he posted it there, so I think that it was an attempt to kind of censor who gets access to this kind of video. But eventually, he made it to the trending list on YouTube, so I don't think his, um, I don't think the strategy really worked. I also encourage anyone to read a critique of that video. I'm not going to cover too much of that video because my main focus of this video is healthcare practitioner irresponsibility during this pandemic. And another great example that I have personally is as, as an Atlanta resident is Dr. Scott Perry of in-town primary care, one of the very, 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 very few primary care practices here in Atlanta that specifically caters to hormone replacement therapy for transgender individuals was caught in a video attending a social nightclub uh, during the pandemic and he has also been criticized for his really really poor decision especially if he's seeing TGNC patients who are already pretty marginalized in the healthcare industrial complex. Honestly as a medical student as someone who has been in the field of medicine for the last two and a half years I'm not really surprised by these uh, discoveries that people have made about really poor decision-making healthcare providers because of the fact that healthcare for the longest time hasn't really been an institution that goes a that actively tries to help all people. Only a few amount of people in the world actually benefit from healthcare, especially in America. A large majority of Americans don't have health insurance and a large majority of Americans don't have access to health care and the people that are getting access to health care have some sort of privilege that allows them to get health insurance so that they can go see a doctor. People in the medical industry have the privilege of having health insurance. They're generally healthy individuals. Even if they have pre-existing conditions or chronic illnesses, they get adequate medical care for those conditions so they don't have the effects of people with chronic illnesses that don't have access to their medications and are suffering from side effects of their illness. So these healthcare providers have this ignorance of what it means to be someone who is suffering from illness, what it means to be a vulnerable population, because they're constantly exposed to good health. They're constantly exposed to proper health practices. They're constantly exposed to actually getting the medications that they need. They completely forget the fact that there are vulnerable populations that will literally die based on the decisions that they make in their social sphere. As a healthcare provider, you have a responsibility to continue to uphold the Hippocratic Oath that you made that day when you got your white coat to protect everyone. That includes continuously educating yourself and learning about the intersections of what makes someone a, someone vulnerable to COVID-19, which I don't see happening for a very long time. Not even in my current medical education system do we actually get specific education on why there are vulnerable populations to COVID-19. We're not thought that. We're actually just being thought the pathology of COVID-19. Yes, that's important, but why not teach us about who is being affected by COVID-19 and how we can keep them safe? Because whether or not we are a healthcare provider, in the end, we are still private citizens. We make decisions as private citizens. Honestly, the amount of medical students I have seen during this pandemic on social media disregarding social distancing rules and going out in fr with friends, going out to restaurants and eating there, eating there maskless is kind of appalling to me. But at the same time, why am I even surprised? Most of these colleagues that I know grew up in very, very in very privileged backgrounds where they didn't know what it means to suffer. They don't understand what it means to survive. And even me to an extent, I am, I am in a place of privilege where I don't know what it means to survive anymore. But what I do though, is that I constantly make an effort to be educated on intersections, be educated on who's being affected and also um, upholding my Hippocratic Oath. Honestly, it's as simple as that. Just uphold it. A lot of people don't do that. And uh, and like 
if you look at other intersections of how a lot of healthcare providers don't upkeep the Hippocratic Oath, I've personally experienced healthcare providers who have not treated me very well for being trans. I've ex- had, I have friends who weren't treated well by healthcare providers because of their race. So the Hippocratic Oath over the years has been kind of something that I look at as kind of an oxymoron because so many people swear by it but never really stand by it. Anyways, that's my little talking head for this piece. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked it. Please be sure to like, subscribe, share this video to anyone who might find it interesting. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter where I keep you up to date with my daily life. And I'll see you on the next one. This is Ben.